Good morning, church. Thank you so much for joining us. Would you join with us as we worship, to worship our great God, and sing about how good he is, how much he loves us, how strong he is. Let's go ahead and sing this morning. Let's worship our King. And fighting our battles 
And I am a child of God And I am a child of God Yeah, yeah, yes And I am a child of God So bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, I worship His holy name, I sing thy name. We honor you this morning with all of our hearts. We worship you. We lift your name high. God, we ask, Lord, that you would just speak to our hearts this morning, that we would be flexible and we would adjust to your plans, your heart. We would see through your eyes this morning and we would feel your heartbeat. God, we surrender our life to you. We love you so much, Jesus, and we pray this in your powerful and holy name, Jesus. Amen. Hey there, and welcome to New Break Church. This is church. If this is your first time tuning in, or maybe it's your first time back in a long time, we wanted to say welcome. We're so glad that you're here. We'd love the opportunity to connect with you, to say hello, to see how we can serve you and pray with you. So would you take the next 20 to 30 seconds and fill out a connection card so that we can say hi sometime during the week? And if you're a regular around here, thank you so much for being part of our church family. Today, I'm so excited because we get to kick off a brand new message series titled Real Faith, and it's based on the book of James. Now, James was the brother of Jesus, and I want you to imagine this. Imagine if you had a sibling, and one day they came home and they told you that they were the Messiah. They were the savior. They were the anointed one. I have a younger brother, and if my brother said that to me, I would look at him and say, dude, you are out of your mind. But not James. For James, the death and the resurrection of Jesus, and James was an eyewitness of the resurrection. That was the ultimate proof for James that Jesus was indeed who he said he was. And James would not only believe that intellectually, but James would give his life towards the message of Jesus. James would become the leader of the early church in the book of Acts. And James would go on and he would be martyred and he would die a horrific death because of his faith in the message of Jesus. So James writes this letter to a bunch of Jewish Christians who were scattered across the Roman Empire. They were dispersed. And the reason why they were dispersed was because they were persecuted 
because of their faith. And they had to endure incredible hardships and trials because of their faith in Jesus. So James writes this letter and he offers them some practical everyday wisdom that would strengthen their faith and that would help them when they're enduring hard times and they feel like they're under pressure. Now, maybe that's how you're feeling right now, under pressure. Your faith is under pressure, and just life in general is under pressure. James has some incredible, everyday words of wisdom for all of us. So I hope you're as, ex as excited as I am. You can follow along today by downloading our sermon notes, but let's pray right now before Pastor Mike comes up to share this message. Heavenly Father, thank you for this letter called James. Thank you for the wisdom that's in it for us. God, I pray that you would help us navigate the pressures, the trials, and the hardships that we're facing. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I'm super excited to launch this series in James. Uh, it's just going to be such a fun study as we journey through, as Pastor Isaac already talked to you about the setting of it. It's very cool. And this weekend is about one of my favorite passages ever in the Bible. It's James chapter 1. And it's about facing the real challenges of our lives. And you and I are certainly in a time where there's Plenty of challenges and trials, right? <laughs> like those of you who know, some of you don't, I had major surgery April 15th. My doctors warned me that my body was going to go through a lot of trauma and there would be, of course, the psychological dimensions to it, but I totally minimized it. Uh, like, like a lot of us, we kind of think we're invincible, especially as it you know, relates to COVID. And uh, I just had never been through any experience like it. And it was impressive to me what happened to my body in two months. Like for me to go from what I do normally in terms of working out, surfing, whatever, to nothing for two months and then to have major surgery and come back from that, it's the weirdest thing ever. I, I developed a, what I call my Santa Claus belly. It's, it's adorable, but I'm on a mission. I'm on, I couldn't even do a push-up. When I, I tried to do my first push-up at about six weeks, I couldn't do it. My muscles had deteriorated so bad in my shoulders and the core strength that it takes to do push-ups, which I was totally used to before, but it was gone. It was weird. So I had to work super hard to, to try and get back into shape, and I'm not even close to it yet. But why? Why did I want to do this? Why did I want to work so hard to face this challenge in my life? It's because I want to live the best life that I possibly can. I want to get back to the things that I love. Now, I know I'm a little bit in denial because I am, in fact, aging. So, you know, God's dealing me with me in this. And this is what this passage really is about. You can see from your outlines, it's, it's about how we face our trials that we're going through in a healthy way. Uh, so I want you to think about that. And I want you to think about and kind of name a trial that you're going through. Try and be as specific as you can. Uh, if you're taking notes, write it down on your outline. Uh, in fact, listen to the Lord, like he'll tell you something. Like, but be specific. It could be like a lot of you are dealing with the realities of uh, who's gonna stay home with the kids, under what circumstances, how are you going to you know, remote, you know, get them involved in remote learning and there's all the learning curve of that and that, I know that's a super frustrating thing for all of you with kids, for the most part. Some of you actually are homeschoolers and you kind of have this wired. <laughs> and that's where you can help each other. But think of a trial that you're going through. Think of a challenge that you're going through. That's what the letter of James launches with. Okay, so open your Bibles, get them on your phones, whatever you've got. We're going to read James chapter 1, uh, verses 1 through 4. Okay, James chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. And it's, it's amazing. There's, by the way, there's a lot of uh, racial challenges in, that James is addressing in the, in the kind of setting in which he's writing. Uh, Pastor Isaac talked to you about the setting. These are Jews who've been scattered all over the world at that time. And so there's a lot of racism involved in the trials that they're going through, a lot of stuff that we're dealing with in our country. So listen, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the, notice now, to the 12 tribes scattered among the nations. This is the diaspora following Stephen's martyrdom. Stephen's the first martyr in the book of Acts. You can read about him in the book of Acts. And then he says, greetings. And then he says something that's radical, totally kind of culturally revolutionary, if you will. 
He says, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you try, uh, face trials of many kinds. Okay, So he's calling them to lean into their challenges and their trials. Because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. And let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Now, I want to explain it to you, okay? Because that's a very huge section of scripture to just bite off and chew on, okay? Huge. So it's about choosing an attitude. Notice, it's about choosing an attitude of joy. That's what goes in the blank. It's a choice that you and I make to, to live in joy during our trials. Now, that sounds crazy, right? That sounds absolutely ridiculous, apart from having Jesus Christ in the center of our lives and inviting him in. That's what he's all about in, in verses 2 and 3. Look at, look at uh, verses 2 and 3 again. He, he uses this word consider. Uh, and if you're taking notes, write down rethink. Okay, it, It's a word that means to reposition it, to rethink the trials that you're going through, and to think about pulling joy to you. Whenever you face different trials, and by the way, the trials he's talking about are not trials that you kind of see coming. Uh, these are trials that are unexpected. These are trials that are very much like COVID, okay? Very COVID-like. Um, like all the challenges of parenting, of, in the workplace, all of those things, they were all unexpected, and we've had to like learn so much in the past few months, right? So whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces something. So it produces perseverance. I like to look at it, you might write this down, I like to look at it like spiritual grit. It produces spiritual grit. So we have to choose these kinds of things. We have, to, we have to make these choices in our current challenges, our current trials. I have this one friend, uh, he goes to the Terracena campus, and he's a doctor in the Navy. And he and his wife have twins, okay? So they have two little twins. <laughs> and they got word from the Navy that they're gonna relocate them to Italy. And uh, so I was talking to him about it, and he's super thankful for our online uh, experience. He loves it. He'll be able to stay a part of New Break in Italy, so it's very cool. But anyway, so he and his wife sold their home, which is a whole God story, but they sold their home because the Navy said they were going to leave at a certain point. And, and then what COVID happened, obviously, and all the complications obviously related to Italy, and so they couldn't move them right away. So they sold their house, and they put them up. Now, remember, it's the husband and wife and twins. They put them up in a one-room hotel on North Island in Coronado. And in talking with him, it's just, it's just impressive. Now, he's been a Christ follower for a long time. But it's impressive to see him considering it pure joy. He's like, hey, Pastor Mike, at least I'm on the beach. <laughs> at least I'm at the water, and we have a whole playground outside. See, it's a choice that you and I make. Paul, the apostle, will later write in Romans 12, 12, be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, and faithful in prayer. So am I? Are you? Like, am I being joyful in hope? Am I being patient in affliction? Am I being faithful in prayer? A, a recent study showed that 83% uh, of adult Americans uh, are feeling extremely stressed and or overwhelmed uh, since the arrival of the virus. I'm like, no kidding. So we're all going through, a, it's really weird, because we're all going through a very similar experience, kind of collectively, and not just in other, obviously Southern California, but it's across the nation, it's across the world. It's, it's a weird thing that we're all going through this global thing together and learning, right? So this, James is talking about a perspective shift. And in a reality and context, they were spread across the known world, but they were all going through very similar kinds of, uh, you know, oppression because of their faith, uh, racism because of being Jewish and a Christ follower, you know, sharing their faith. So there's a lot of dynamics to it. So in a way, it's kind of weirdly similar. Uh, but it's a perspective shift. And here it is. I put it on your outlines that you and I have the power to think differently and feel differently about our trials. We can consider it or not pure joy. 
Now how again, how, why, what else is he going through? What, is else, what else is in this passage for us? And that is this, to consider how God wants to use my trials to actually shape me and not shatter me. That, that, and write this down. If you're taking notes, write this down. God is for me. God is for you. He wants to use the trials that we're going through. He doesn't cause them. He allows them, but he wants to use them to shape me, not shatter me. No matter what, like my whole cancer journey, my surgery at the height of COVID, for crying out loud, I had to go to the hospital twice because I got the blood infection two or three weeks after I had the surgery. So all this was going on. What is it that God, is he trying to shatter me? No, he's trying to shape me. He's trying to shape you. Verse four, let perseverance, which I like to define that word uh, as staying power. It's, it's the ability to have a long obedience, a, a long, this is what God's will is for all of us, to have this long throw in our lives of learning perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Now, mature and complete here in the text, it means fit for ministry. Ministry in the broadest sense of the term. Everything you're doing in life, if you do it with God and for God and allow God to work through you, becomes ministry. Every single thing in life becomes spiritual, becomes sacred, really. There's no divorce between the sacred and the secular from a biblical perspective. Everything that you and I do is, is ministry. And, and it says in the text that you'll be mature and complete. Now, that's not a position of arrivalism. That's a, that's a process, that's a journey that James is writing about. It's just like in New Break, like, like uh, and I have something really awesome to share with you guys, because like Pastor Robert, okay, Pastor Robert and I are co-lead pastors this year, 2020. In the end of this year, I become the legacy pastor. Robert becomes the full-on lead pastor. But I've been discipling him for 15 years. I've actually been discipling him for 20 years, because he's been in New Break for 20 years. So you see, what James is writing about isn't just for me. It's for Pastor Robert. It's not just for you. It's for your family. It's for your friends. You building perseverance and you building this fitness equips you to help the people in your job, in your neighborhood, whatever. And like in Pastor Robert's case, he's going to become me at the end of this year. But he's also going to become the like Tiersana is going to be his home campus. So Robert and Lisa are going to really like do what Teresa and I did. They're, he's going to be the, that's going to be their home base. He'll be the predominant speaker, not the all, not a, you know, like he won't speak every weekend. We're, we're taking a team approach to everything as we always do, but he'll be the predominant speaker. He'll be the predominant communicator. And, and it's a great, great, transition. It's the calling of God. We all believe it. The board believes it. Uh, Robert and Lisa believe it. It's a super cool thing. And then at Scripps campus, of course, Jared this year is transitioning to be the full-on campus pastor of Scripps. Uh, So all of these things are all in this text. This is what God's doing. So it's a perspective shift that you and I take. It's, it's like a shifting of how we see it, where we see, see that trials are transformative tools in God's hands. They're transformative tools if we see God's perspective toward them, what he's up to. And God is always up to something good. That's pretty awesome. Now, the Apostle Paul will later on, remember James is likely the first letter written in the New Testament. So Paul later on will write in the letter to the church at Rome, in Romans 5, 3 through 5, very, very cool passage, very similar. Listen, Paul writing, we can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials. What? Look what, look what he says. For we know that they help us develop, here it is again, endurance perseverance. And endurance develops strength of character, and character strengthens our confident hope of salvation, and this hope will not lead to disappointment, for we know how, here it is, here it is, let this in, we know how dearly God loves us. You mean even in the midst of COVID? Yes, but listen, here's the how. Because, now there's lots of becauses, Okay, there's lots of evidences of why um, we 
believe in God, why we believe in Jesus, why, and some of you are considering that. But here's one of them. When, when you become a Christ follower, this is what's going to happen. Here's what he says. How dearly God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. See, it's about, it's about listening to the Holy Spirit and him bringing his love and his wisdom, his perspective, and we'll talk about that in a minute, into our lives. It's about us experiencing him. Uh, it's about listening and learn, leaning into the Holy Spirit and his role in our lives when we're going through trials. I like to look at it like, um, I don't know if you've ever whitewater rafted, but I've, I've done a bit of that in my life. Super fun. Love whitewater rafting. But what do you do when you're whitewater rafting? You, you're on your toes. Not on your toes. You're on your knees, but you're on your toes, okay? You have your oar in your hand, and you're watching the current. You're watching where the rips are and the current, and you're watching for rocks. You're watching for the path, right? And you have to pivot, the favorite word of COVID leadership. You have to pivot quick. You have to watch and listen to the river. Listen to the river because the river will tell you and show you which way to go. It'll, it'll show you how to navigate the rapids. It'll show you how to navigate the waterfalls and everything. Same thing with the Holy Spirit. That's what he wants to do. He wants to lead us and guide us by his spirit in the midst of the challenges and the trials that we're going through. So it kind of begs this question, God, what are you trying to shape in me in this trial? What are you trying to shape in us? Like in Newbreak, right? Uh, in our life groups, in our ministry, in our outreaches. What are you trying to shape in us? God, what are you trying to shape in American culture? Because uh, obviously it's a huge opportunity for the grace and power of God right now. But we have to learn how to... How to, how to talk to people about our faith. We have to listen to the Spirit as we navigate the river of COVID and how do we love our neighbors? So I want you to think about that question for a minute. How, what is it, God, that you're trying to shape in me in this trial? What a great question from Pastor Mike. God, what are you shaping in me through this trial? Church, whatever you may be facing, whether it's a circumstance you're experiencing that's difficult, a trial, whatever you may be facing, God is shaping us and equipping us. In fact, I believe he's enriching us. I love how Paul says it in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 11. He says, you will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through your generosity, the result is thanksgiving to God. You see, church, every time we give, whether it's through obedience and our tithing, or as we give above and beyond through generosity, through our kingdom builders, we're able to impact the world around us locally and globally. That is what happens. The result is there is thanksgiving to God, not just for you and me, but also for the people that we impact. So today is one of those occasions where we have the opportunity to give. It's an act of worship, and it impacts the world around us. So you can make that decision today. You can give at the link that you'll see on the screen. And as you give... Let it be an opportunity for us to see that through our generosity, the result is thanksgiving to God. Okay, so now I don't know what he spoke into you, like what it is that he's trying to shape in you during this trial. I know what he's trying to shape in me. But James is going to go in a direction that's common to all of us. And this is always true in trials. It's true in everything, but it's certainly true in trials, okay? So look at verses 5 through 8. Look at what James does, okay? This is about the power of the Holy Spirit and about being missional in our lives where, where we gain uh, stuff, and we'll see it when we read it, but not just for us. It's for those around us, okay? And this is a ministry of the Holy Spirit and something that God is, is going to teach us all at the same time. Look at the person next to you and tell them you really need this passage, okay? Just take a minute. Okay, maybe you're by yourself. Okay, just say it to yourself. I really need this passage. Okay, look at verses five through eight. James now writing, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, and here's one of the greatest lines in the Bible, who gives generously to all without finding fault. Now just hang on a second. Because a lot of times we have that stinking thinking in our heads that says, I'm not good enough. Uh, I'm too bad. Uh, that God won't, you know, doesn't want to give me wisdom. No, he wants to give everyone wisdom. Now, there's, there's a piece of it, and I'll explain it. So he says, he gives it generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you, okay? So there's a promise, but then there's a condition, all right? 
There's a condition. Asking and then faith. And I'll explain it. Look at verse 6 because it can be a little confusing. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt because the one who doubts is like a wave on the sea blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is, a double-minded, and un- is, a, is double-minded and unstable in all they do. Now let me explain that. Because it sounds like what James is saying is that we need to like ratchet up our faith when we ask. That's not the point. He's, he's uh, speaking in cla- a kind of classic rabbinic fashion, just like Jesus did. Uh, Jesus would call it serving two masters. You can't serve two masters. So he's talking about saved or not saved, not how much faith you have, okay? Because you're going to throw yourself under the bus all the time. You're going to always think you don't have enough faith, okay? Uh, remember, faith is a gift that then we exercise, but that's not what James is saying here. He's saying God will give it to you when you have a relationship with God and he'll give it to you without finding fault and he'll give you wisdom regarding the trial that you're going through. That's why you and I, our duty, our responsibility is to ask God for wisdom to help us navigate the trial that we're in. That's what goes in the blank, uh, navigate. Asking God all the time, all the time, like daily, moment to moment even. This is where praying without ceasing, where we're asking for wisdom all the time. Verse five, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should what? Ask God, ask God. And by the way, let's just all admit something because it's just universally true. You are, I am, we are all ignorant about a whole host of things, spiritual, things, spiritual truths, ways to navigate the rapid waters of our COVID experience, how to raise kids. We're all ignorant about a lot of things. Now, we'll gain wisdom as we go. I certainly have gained a lot of wisdom because I'm old. I've been following Jesus for a long time, but I'm still incredibly ignorant about a myriad of things. So what should our prayer requests look like during trials? It should be like this, and I, I put these in your notes. God, help me to see your hand in this. Whatever the challenges that you're dealing with today, like right now, in this moment. God, help me to see your hand in this. Um, This one. God, help me develop more Christ-like character in this hardship. Help me to develop, that's our vision statement, right? Developing Christ-centered leaders who change their world. So God, help me to develop more Christ-like character somehow in this hardship. God, help me understand how this serves, notice, your plan, not my plan, your plan. Because oftentimes God's plan is different from my plans. My plan was not to get cancer and have to have major surgery, okay? It was not. It was a, it was a trial that came upon me. I didn't expect it, didn't plan for it, whatever. How to, help me understand your plan for my life. What are you doing? And then not to get stuck praying this way. Now, it's okay to ask these questions, okay, with God. Uh, in the Psalm series, we studied Psalm 73. Obviously, it's okay to ask God, God, why me? Okay, there's nothing wrong with that. Just don't get stuck there. You gotta ultimately let go of that, lean into the spirit, listen well, learn deeply, okay? Don't get stuck, God, why me? And don't get stuck on this. Certainly this. God, are you mad at me? Like, in my world, okay, in my trial, God, are you mad at me? Is that why I got uh, cancer? That's that's stinking thinking, okay? Stinking thinking. Disease, biblically, theologically, all disease finds its origin as sin entered the world and freedom is in the world and the world broke and thus sickness and disease entered into the world. God didn't cause it in his freedom and in his creativity is just the way the world is. So God doesn't do stuff like that because he's mad at me. <laughs> but again, I can be totally thinking, thinking. That's why it, it's, it takes a perspective shift. Where, and I don't, it's this, I put it in your notes. I don't just want to go through trials. I want to grow through trials. Like every time I go through anything, like leading new break in a COVID world, it's crazy, right? But I want to grow through it. I want to become a better leader, a better dad, a better husband, a better whatever. I'm neighbor, you know. Uh, I love this saying. You may be familiar with part of it. 
Uh, if you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. You're probably familiar with that part. But then there's this other part that I love. But if you can stand the heat, you often create delicious meals for those in the house. So, see, that's it. It's not about just me and you. It's about who's in the house. It's about learning and seeing what it is that God's trying to shape in me, teach me, give me wisdom about, not just for me, but for everybody. This is you. This is you on your street. This is you in your life. And you can persevere by knowing the promise is worth the pain. What promise? For wisdom? Yes, okay, that's part of it. But there's a promise that comes all the way down to verse 12. Look at verse 12 in your Bibles in James 1. Look down to the promise. In fact, I would encourage you to read this out loud. I'm going to read it, obviously, but I would encourage you as you're sitting there, read this verse out loud with me. Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. Listen to me. Heaven awaits. There is no COVID in heaven. Thank you, Jesus. Okay? But it's about having him in our lives. It's about letting him in. And some of you need to begin this relationship with Jesus. You've been thinking about it. You maybe have been watching online for a while. Maybe you have gone to some brick and mortar kinds of experiences spiritually, thinking about the gospel, thinking about Jesus. This is your time. Let him in. I'm going to lead us in prayer. And, and it's, it's just about you connecting with God, okay? So I'm going to pray a prayer about our relationship with Jesus. And, and then I'm going to pray for wisdom for all of us, okay? And, and that we would develop. So just bow your heads with me and close your eyes. Lord Jesus, I pray right now, Lord, in behalf of everybody listening, Lord, I just, we ask for forgiveness for all of our brokenness and sin, all of our stubbornness, our rebellion, our trying to figure things out on our own, being stuck, Lord, and we pray for your forgiveness. We pray that your spirit will come into our lives more and more, and you'll give us wisdom. You'll give us perspective. You'll help us to see this is not just about us. It's about us changing the world. It's about us changing, because we can't give away what we don't have. But it's about us then changing the world by the power of God, listening to a different drumbeat, walking in a different manner. Lord, heaven awaits. And some of us are beginning a relationship with you for the very first time. Others of us, though, Lord, we're just leaning in. Lord, so I pray this week, you'll, you'll speak to us. We know you're going to speak to us all week. Help us to ask. Help us to be attentive. Help us to watch for the rocks and the river. Help us to keep our paddles at the ready. Help us to paddle in the direction where, where you lead. Help us to follow you well. Lord, in this journey through the book of James, help us to study the book. Help us to learn the message of the book. Help us to be people of the book. We thank you for what you're doing in our lives. It's a gift. We could never earn it or deserve it. So use us, Lord, beyond our wildest dreams. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you guys. Thank you, Pastor Mike, for that incredible message. Now, if you made a decision to follow Jesus today, congratulations. That is the most important decision that you'll ever make. And I promise that you'll see God show up in your life in powerful ways. Now, we want to help you take your next step in your journey of faith because we believe that our faith journey is a journey, and it's a journey made up of many steps. So if you text the word follow to the number on screen, we'll help you and we'll be in touch with you to help you with your next steps. Now, I wanted to give a huge shout out and a big thank you to all our volunteers who serve behind the scenes. On any given weekend, we have hundreds of volunteers just like you who serve with their gifts and their talents to make a difference in someone else's lives. We have people on our kids team who even during this pandemic are at home making crafts and dropping off those crafts so that our kids and our families can know Jesus better. That's just one example of people like you and like me who serve with their gifts and their talents. I know this, we're wired by God to serve. And when we serve, two things will happen. We'll discover our purpose and we'll be filled with joy. 
So I'm inviting you right now to join our online serve team. If you're wondering if we need your help, the answer is yes, we need your help. So take that plunge, take that step, and make a difference in someone else's life. If you go to newbreak.church forward slash serve online, fill out that form to indicate your willingness to serve, and I look forward to being in touch with you this week. But until next time, God bless you. Have a great week. We can't wait to see you soon.